Salutations. Welcome to Pod Mortem. I'm Travis Hunter, joined as always by my co-host, my sister, and my brother-in-law. Hi, I'm Renee Hunter Vasquez. Hi, I'm John Paul Vasquez. This week, we're broadcasting live from a steam-filled boiler room discussing the 1984 horror classic, A Nightmare on Elm Street. This film was written and directed by the late, great horror icon Wes Craven. Drawing from childhood experiences, real-world events, and combining elements of horror and fantasy, Craven left quite a unique and inventive mark on the burgeoning slasher subgenre. With impressive visuals, an effectively terrifying concept, and excellent character work from Robert England, this film has more than stood the test of time and, for good reason, become one of the most iconic horror films in the genre. So, A Nightmare on Elm Street. What were your first impressions on the film? I remember watching this movie a lot when I was a kid when I shouldn't have. <laughs> like most movies. Right. Yeah. It's kind but, of a um, thing happening a lot yeah. on the show. It did scare the shit out of me as a kid, but I loved it. Like it didn't matter how creepy it was or it was still fantastic. I was like this. And even watching it now, I was like, this movie's still good. It is. Like, it it's, is. it's got its problems, but I mean, who cares? No, it's like still surprisingly good. Yeah. It was. I was like, man, this is, I was like, man, kill me, Freddy, please. <laughs> and I don't really remember like a first impression or a first moment, but I know that I had to watch this at least a lot when I was a kid because mm -hmm. some of the imagery really stuck with me. Like even now seeing it, I was like, oh shit. <laughs> um, Brought back to your yeah. childhood. But yeah, it's, I haven't seen it in, I mean, I don't know, at least a decade, but it holds up really, really well. Like, I was surprised at how good it mm -hmm. still is. Mm -hmm. You seen when, you know, we moved, finally moved in together or whatever. I have the entire set. Yes. <laughs> like, I have the whole set. Yeah. I bought that a long time ago. Those DVDs are like old, like old, old. <laughs> yeah, he has all of them. Well, I know Nay and I are more of the Michael Myers, and mm -hmm. you're way more of a Freddy man. Well, like I said before, when we covered Halloween, I, it's not that I don't like Michael Myers, but I feel it's just rude to kill me and not say anything. <laughs> like, it's like, oh, you're going to oh, cut my wow. head off and say nothing. And I will say, yeah, it's like you, I've always loved Freddy's sass. And I know you don't like me calling him sassy, but he's he is ass. He's <laughs> absolutely sassy, he and is, I'm here for it. I will say something, though, about this film is that this is probably, outside of New Nightmare, Freddy at his scariest. He's not yeah. calling yeah, people all types of bitches or anything yet. Uh, he does call uh, somebody you know, a bitch. I mean, but, <laughs> well, but, but he, no, I get what you're but saying. But it's not it's the not recent yeah. <laughs> catchphrase. Like, if you pull a Freddy doll, he'd be like, bitch, nah. Yeah. But back yeah. then, he wouldn't no, be. No, that surprised no, me, yeah. too, because I guess he really was a lot more subdued what? in yeah. this first one. And I mean, and also, this movie did introduce us to Johnny Depp. So, I mean, that too, we, we yeah. got to give it props for that, too. Mm, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Oddly, I don't remember the first time I ever watched this movie. Mm -hmm. It obviously stuck with me, like you said, with the imagery. There are things that I remember that still frighten me yeah. to this day when yeah. I rewatch it, but I can't picture myself as a child sitting down watching this and remembering it. One thing I do know is that, thankfully, my brain usually works against me a lot of the time, but I never had a Freddy Krueger nightmare, and I thank my brain. <laughs> <laughs> For that, for once, that never happened. So well, I would suck. It'd be like, am I and gonna yeah. die? <laughs> <laughs> this is it. But I think honestly, that's what's so genius about this movie is that it takes something that's supposed to be this peaceful thing. Like, I mean, I know we all have nightmares and happens, right, right. But when you think of your bed, that's where you retire it's to. It's a safe yeah. haven. To that's like your sanctuary. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And to take that away from you is a pretty genius. Yeah, <laughs> I have no idea. Yeah. 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 I read that Wes Craven actually got the idea for this film from reading a couple of articles in the, it was either the late 70s or the early 80s. Mm -hmm. There were, I guess, immigrants that came from, I believe, Thailand. Mm -hmm. And they came to the United States and they were teenagers and they were having these nightmares. They told their parents about them and their parents are like, well, just dreams, you know, go back to sleep. And so they did. And then they died in their sleep. It was like three, four, five Holy of them or something. Shit. Yeah, and crazy. so, yeah. There was one that specifically that tried to stay up, might sound familiar. Right. They found coffee makers in his room. They found uh, pet pills, but he eventually did succumb to whatever was happening. And so Wes Craven gets this idea and he's like, well, that's fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> no, Which it's, it's, it's I a mean, great idea. I mean, that's no, awful, but, but it's a great yeah. idea. It's a great idea. And nobody had ever, I'd never, you know, at least from my film knowledge, nobody had ever done anything like this right. before. And so to use this kind of a fantasy idea 
and then throw the lens of like the slasher subgenre on top of it. Yeah. yeah. Great idea. And it's it's good because like before they were all quiet. Like Leatherface yes, is quiet. Exactly. Michael Myers, who you know what I mean? They're all uh he's he's got some he's words. He's gonna let you know it's going <laughs> well, on. Well, and yeah. I read that he originally was supposed to be quiet like the rest of them, but I think his Again, Saz <laughs> is really what makes him stand out from everybody else. Oh, no. Yeah. yeah I mean, it gives him his own lane to be in mm-hmm. because you got you're going to have Jason competing with Michael Myers as of far course. as like who. Strong you know. silent right, type. Right, right, right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but the thing that surprises me the most is that Wes Craven was normally known for like kind of almost like exploitation level violent mm-hmm. films. Mm-hmm. Last House on the Left, The Hills Have Eyes. And then he comes out with this, which is honestly, there's blood and gore and whatnot, of but course. it's like his most subdued tonally mm-hmm. at the time. And so it feels very different from what he's going for. It reminded me of when James Wan talked about doing Insidious as a way to demonstrate that he wasn't just Saw. To prove. And I feel uh. like that's what he was doing here. He's like, I'm not just the last house on the left. I can make pictures like this. <laughs> <laughs> I <don't know> I <laughs> <laughs> pictures. But... He wrote it in 81, shopped it around Hollywood. No one was interested. Finally, New Line Cinema and Robert Shea give him a chance, and I am so glad that they did. Oh, yeah. Hell, yeah. Definitely. Now, before we invade this film's dreams, we would like to issue a warning for spoilers. Podmortem is a very in-depth podcast, and in thoroughly discussing horror films, we have no choice but to spoil a thing or two. If you don't wish to be spoiled, please go watch the film, then come back and enjoy the show. If you've already seen the film or don't care about spoilers, let's try to stay awake. So before the film opens, we see the New Line Cinema logo, which always reminds me, I've always heard that New Line Cinema is actually going under, and then they took a chance on A Nightmare on Elm Street, and it ended up saving the company. That's crazy. I didn't even know that. It's nuts. They even affectionately referred to New Line Cinema as the house that Freddy built. Well. (laughs) I mean, yeah, it really did. But the film opens proper with an oddly, I guess, window boxed aspect ratio of a scene. Mm -hmm. It threw me off. It's odd. It's an odd choice. I forwarded a little bit because I was like, is this DVD just really old? Like, is this, is it going to be this way the whole time? This is what we thought screens would be like. (laughs) It's like, fuck. Nope. But we see a man walking into a boiler room and grabbing a bag. He dumps the bag on a table and sifts through it. In the debris, He grabs a knife, and we see him grab a leather glove as well. We hear him breathing heavily, not Michael Myers. I was going (laughs) to say, Michael Myers. Mind you, yeah. (laughs) But he's fashioning the blade into like a crude claw. He adds it to the glove, and we see him slide it on, displaying the blade fingers Mm -hmm. on it in all of its glory as the title A Nightmare on Elm Street ascends up. I'm already terrified. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Like, I don't need to see any more. Here we go. I mean, obviously already iconic. Mm -hmm. I read that Wes Craven originally wanted Freddy's weapon to be a sickle. Huh. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I don't think that would Uh, work. It's it's so weird when something is so iconic and it's like, oh, they almost did this. Like, you Mm -hmm. can't even imagine him not having... His, His yeah. finger knife. gloves. Yeah. Finger gloves. <laughs> <laughs> He's a greaser. <laughs> no, but um, he was basically just trying to get away from everybody using knives because everybody was using yeah. knives. But then he ended up on these and I'm glad he did. Yeah. But the title gives way to a very quick shot of the blades of the glove piercing through a curtain. We then see Tina Gray, played by Amanda Weiss, quickly making her way through a dark, wet tunnel. She's wearing a nightgown and glancing behind her as she continues running. I just want to shout out the atmosphere of this is fantastic. Mm -hmm. It's eerie. There's that simplistic but awesome theme music playing. Oh, yeah. Um, According to Jacques Haitken, who's the director of photography, that's real steam, which required a boiler. Yeah, that like maze shit that's going on. That looks It's fantastic. But it just shows going the extra mile. No, yeah. Yeah, it pays off. And this was pretty low budget, so the stuff that they're able to do, and we'll talk about that in a bit, Mm -hmm. but she hears someone call her name, so she turns around. There's no one there, but in the other direction, we hear a loud clanging noise, only to see a lamb hastily making its way down the tunnel as well. I didn't understand those. I'm (laughs) not sure. (laughs) What Wes Craven said is it's like a lamb to the slaughter. Okay. Okay. I guess, but <laughs> she freaks out as if she's afraid of wool or something. Yeah. <laughs> like she's like, "Oh shit!" and runs the other way. 
unfortunately for Tina, things are much more frightening around these parts. <laughs> <laughs> she should have stayed with the lamb. Exactly. Yeah. You should have just pet it and just called it a day. But <laughs> I kept that thing with me. It's like me yeah, and you. It's it. We're buddies. <laughs> we got to get out of here. She's like, it's like the canary in the coal mine. <laughs> it's like if you start freaking out. <laughs> but it's a boiler room now that she's in, complete with even more steam and a bunch of pipes. This is actually a real boiler room in an old jail that has since been closed down for asbestos. <laughs> oh, shit. So it probably was not safe for them to be here. <laughs> but she makes her way through cautiously as underneath the walkway she's on, we see the silhouette of a man passing by as he laughs. Tina rounds the corner, but behind her, we see and hear that glove scraping its blades against metal. Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot. But suddenly, right in front of her, We see the blades tearing through that curtain again before completely ripping through it to reveal the shadow of a man in the corner of the frame. Tina, who has obviously seen enough, takes off in the other direction. (laughs) The way she's running seems comical, but holy shit. Like, it's have you ever had a bad dream? I wanted to talk about this as well because that's literally how I run in dreams. You You can't run, you can't scream. Like, it looks silly, but it's like, dude, I've literally felt that. Yes, it. I hate it. I love it, but I hate it. <laughs> yeah. You know, I think they, they actually put her on a treadmill for this and then slowed the shot down Man. to achieve that. But it looks fantastic. Tina splits off into a little side hatch dead end, turns around and screams as we see the man's shadow go by again, accompanied by the sound of the lamb like braying. So, you know, she's extra scared now. Mm-hmm. But she slowly steps forward until out of nowhere, the man lurches up from behind her, grabbing her by the shoulder and brandishing the glove as she screams. We then see Tina waking up in bed, lurching up into a very claustrophobic shot. Yeah. What a goddamn dream, man. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Too specific. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. I remember a little too much of what yeah. was going on. Did there have to be a boiler room? Yeah. Did there have like... Fuck was the lamb there? <laughs> <laughs> There's a crucifix behind her on the wall, which I thought was very interesting. But her mother comes in to check on her immediately. I I would understand this if she woke up screaming, but she didn't. She just woke oh, up. Oh, that's a good point. Nah. She's like, did I hear that bed creak? <laughs> 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 and just runs in. But Tina tells her mom that it was just a dream. And her mom's like, yeah, some dream, judging from that. And we see that Tina has slashes in her nightgown. Mm-hmm. Then her dad or maybe her stepdad because he's got stepdad energy <laughs> he <has laughs> he's got something energy. yeah it's well yeah, yeah. He, he comes in all creepy like and he's like you coming back to the sack or what and her mom's like well the getting's good so <laughs> i was gonna say <laughs> d snyder her mom is only concerned <laughs> with getting it in d she's snyder, like, oh, that's yeah. It, yeah. because clearly her fingernails did not do that no she's like it's yeah, your nails she, you're fucking fine she blames I, it. I got yeah, something yeah she's she like you good you good right, i'm gonna go get plowed <laughs> go back to bed after she bails tina grabs her crucifix from the wall and holds it close but we then see a group of girls in white dresses with some hazy cinematography jumping rope and singing a song based on one two buckle my shoe but in this version it goes one two freddy's coming for you Three, four, better lock your door. Five, six, grab your crucifix. Seven, eight, gonna stay up late. Nine, ten, never sleep again. Much more sinister. Yeah, yeah. This, I like this version <laughs> less than the yes. other one. You know, what's funny is I remember as a kid, our Uncle Rob, he would all... <laughs> I was wondering if we were yeah. gonna talk about this. Well, the thing is, he, he would always say, nine, ten, gonna wind up dead. <laughs> and he's not wrong. He's not wrong. Actually, it's more true than the actual. Exactly. Right? <laughs> Never sleep again. That doesn't fucking work or help. You're going to wind up. Right. You're going to yeah. go to sleep. Yeah. And Therefore, <laughs> you're going to wind, wind up, up dead. Yeah. But we slowly pan over from the girls to the road where we see a red car parking up against the curb. In the car is Tina, as well as her best friend, Nancy Thompson, played by Heather Langenkamp, and Nancy's boyfriend, Glenn Lance, played by Johnny Depp, as we said, in his first feature film role. It's, it's crazy to even think of. It really is. And I read that he only got this part because Wes Craven's daughter said he was, quote, dreamy. Yeah, I read That's that the too. only reason he was even cast that in this. That is The car is dreamy. Yeah. The car is dreamy. I drive that car. 58 Cadillac. That <laughs> That's fantastic. Badass. What's Glenn doing with this shit? <laughs> yeah, right? He doesn't appreciate it. <laughs> the crazy thing I learned from the commentary is that this five second shot from the girls jumping rope to the car required six people behind the camera to shoot it. 
Oh Damn. my God. Yeah, it goes from slow motion to regular motion, diffusion to no diffusion, a slow zoom to a dolly. It's just a lot of oh my fucking techniques for this one tiny yeah, moment. Yeah. It's just impressive. I mean, it works. Oh yeah, yeah. It and it looks good. great. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But Tina's telling Nancy about the nightmare she had and Nancy brings up the old jump rope song that they listened to as kids. Listen to. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was a fucking bop. No, it wasn't. <laughs> but... Tina says it's the first thing she thought of, too, and Nancy admits that she also had a nightmare the night before. Just then, Tina's boyfriend, Rod Lane, played by Nick Corey, comes up. He makes a comment about his wiener. <laughs> and then Accurate. Tina yeah. counters with a joke about his wiener, which he doesn't take well. No, that dude came with the jokes and was discouraged <laughs> immediately. He could dish it out, but he could not take no. it. And this is her boyfriend. It was odd to me that yeah, they... Yeah, it was a little weird. Didn't read that way at first. No, it just read I'm like some honest. asshole hitting on yeah. her. Yes. And her being like, fuck off, Square. Or yeah, whatever. and he's like, man, fuck you. <laughs> yeah, he did. He said, up your ass with a lawnmower or something. Yeah. It was really stupid. <laughs> really, very, very, honestly, poorly written. <laughs> <laughs> but some of the camera work in this section really reminded me a lot of Halloween. You know, when Lori, Annie, and Linda yeah. are walking... And I know there was some influence, but this just seemed really close. Also, it's just another film that's shot in California pretending to be the Midwest. So you're like, mm, well, yeah. there's you know. the vibes. But after he leaves, Tina says that she could not get back to sleep after the nightmare that she had. And she asks Nancy what she dreamt. And Nancy tells her it was no big deal. Everyone has a bad dream once in a while. Glenn suggests that she should try to tell herself that it's a bad dream whenever she's actually having it, and then she'll wake right up, because apparently that's what works for him. Glenn then runs off to class after kissing Nancy with Tina calling after him, asking if he also had a bad dream last night. He doesn't answer, but Tina says that maybe an earthquake is coming because they say things get weird before they do. Right. But Nancy just smiles at her and they head off to class. That night, with Tina's mom out of town for a few days, Nancy and Glenn are at her house to keep her company. Tina says she's surprised that Glenn's mother is letting him stay over, but Nancy spills the beans that she does not know about it. <laughs> wow, that makes more sense. Yeah. yeah, seriously. As it turns out, Glenn has a cousin who lives near an airport, and so he lies saying that he's staying with him, so when he calls his mom, he has to play a fucking <laughs> tape with airplane <laughs> sound so effects. Stupid. It's so It's weirdly it's too much. silly. It, it, is. it is. It is. But. And according to Heather Langenkamp, it took forever to film this scene. <laughs> If I were Wes Craven, I'd be like, is this even funny yeah, enough? Like, after right. how many Do times we, we did this? it? Yeah. <laughs> it's very silly. But he does call his mom to check in with the tape playing in the background. Of course, the girls are laughing their asses off in the background as he's kind of successfully tricking his mom until the tape starts to play other noises. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what is this like, tape? I don't know. Why didn't you just get the airplane <laughs> tape, Glenn? He's like, I'm just going to get everything because there's fucking cars racing and airplane dog fights. And then, of course, <laughs> hilarity ensues as he rushes to get off the phone. <laughs> well, why didn't he just stop? Like, they're having so much trouble stopping the tape. I don't yeah. understand. I, yeah, like, I don't just know. turn it off. It's, He's it's like, like, oh, radio is it? Yeah. yeah. How do you not know how to <laughs> work like, We don't know how to work this thing. <laughs> He's like, oh, it was a, an accident in front of the house. Like, just turn yeah. it yeah, off yeah, instead of explaining the sound. getting off, he said, yes, I'll call the police. It's... <laughs> 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 sad to me because on the commentary Wes Craven said that he went over his lines with Johnny Depp over and over and over again because Johnny Depp was so nervous about oh. screwing up because before this he was really mainly a musician so this yeah. was like his first foray outside That's of so 21 crazy. Jump Street into acting. That's so crazy to even think about Yeah, as big as he is now that he would you know and be yeah. nervous. Yeah. So after they have a little laugh about this Nancy's like see I told you you'd feel better after a little while but Tina's like no I've been thinking about the nightmare all day. <laughs> <laughs> kind of ruined them. you were not supposed to yeah no well, I guess it didn't work at all and so Tina starts explaining more of the nightmare and she describes the man in her dream including his face and what she calls his fingernails Nancy's intrigued because she also dreamed about a man last night who was wearing as she says a dirty red and green sweater they don't have to drag his sweater no <laughs> it's a little rough it's like and he looked like shit <laughs> But when she mentions the sweater, we get a shot of Glenn, whose face is basically like, oh, shit. Yeah, I noticed that, too. A little yeah. moment of realization. Yeah. But isn't say it. No, never. Tina asks about the fingernails, and Nancy says that they were more like finger knives that he made himself, and that he scraped them along things, and then she starts even imitating the screeching noise. 
I would vomit. Yeah, yeah. because you're like, that is exactly, oh, no, yeah. that's not possible. There would be no getting over yeah, there's that. There's no way no. we're all dreaming oh, about no. the same no. show. Tina tells Nancy exactly that, that that's exactly the guy that she dreamed about. And Glenn, pulling a page from my book, says it's impossible. <laughs> but he drops off a bowl of chips like he's a server. Yeah. <laughs> he's like, can I get you girls anything else? <laughs> Just then, Glenn hears a screeching noise outside. But he says it was nothing when Tina asks. But then it happens again, and they all hear it. And so he can't deny it anymore. <laughs> He's like, no, everything's fine. Okay, maybe not. <laughs> but they head over to the back door, and they open it up, cautiously making their way outside as Glenn investigates further on his own. The noise continues, and Glenn threatens the stranger making the noise. I was like, way to be intimidating. Yeah. It's trying. I mean, <laughs> I mean yeah. He's doing he his tried. best. Yeah. yeah. It's not great, though. <laughs> But we then hear an odd noise rustling as Glenn calls for a cat that may or may not exist. <laughs> but he's like, kitty, kitty, kitty. Yeah. Chow, chow, chow. I've never gotten a cat's attention <laughs> no. this way. But out of the darkness, we see a figure move into the frame very quickly and tackle Glenn. <laughs> it's like Spider-Man. Yeah. It is like, oh, shit. They didn't count it on this. It's just Rod. He lifts Glenn back up, calling his own tackle brilliant. <laughs> so it's just very clear he's kind yeah. of an asshole. But he says he came by to make up with Tina and asked if Tina's mom is home, to which Tina says, of course. Liar. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) But he pulls out the gardening tool that he was using to make the screeching noise. And then he asks if there's an orgy going on. Okay. First of all, what the fuck? And secondly, this is a threesome at best. <laughs> That's what's well, I guess there are 15 people inside. No. Yeah, but you've really never heard that? Nobody's ever told you? Are you guys having an orgy or With something? With three people? Like, There's only know, three a, I know, but it's just funny. It's, people don't often ask I, me if I'm having... I, and like I told your sister too, I feel like they all look young enough. Yes. And they feel young. Yeah. Like they don't feel like, ah, oh, you guys are 30 <laughs> playing this. Well, I, th- I, they're all in their early 20s. I think Tina was like 24, mm-hmm. but uh-huh. they don't read as 15. No, and they're supposed they to be. Don't. Fi- I feel like I, they should have been 17. I or assume so. they no, were yeah. supposed to be 17. No, yeah. they mentioned later on, she's 15 years old. And, but oh, I'm like, that's not honey, yeah. no, no, she's not. I will say, though, Heather Langenkamp probably is the closest to portraying that. Yeah. yeah. I, but it's probably because she kind of just has like a girls next door vibe mm-hmm. about her. Mm-hmm. But they're, none of them read. 15? Not 15. <laughs> no. no. But in answer to asking if an orgy is going on, Glenn's like, <laughs> a funeral maybe. <laughs> but then Rod pulls out a fucking switchblade like it's a West yeah, Side Story. I thought they were friends. What <laughs> no. the fuck? I don't know. I don't think Glenn and Rod, they don't oh, seem to like each other. Okay. No. And But then again, when this happened, I was like, okay, so maybe... Wes Craven isn't plugged into 80s teen yeah. <laughs> culture because Rod's a goddamn greaser, but <laughs> he is. Right. And he wins points for that for me. It is I, cool. I, I will allow it. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> but Nancy grabs the knife from him and says that it's just a sleepover. Rod puts his arm around Tina and is like, Your mom isn't home, is she? And says that they have stuff to discuss before leaving Nancy and Glenn outside. This is the first time that I was like, Oh, they're together? Yeah, because that interaction before yeah, it, was it didn't was feel weird. that way at it was all not weird and rod's like look we'll have tina's mom's bed you guys can have the rest of the house tina asked them not to leave her alone with rod but then they playfully head upstairs <laughs> it's like are you guys a couple or not glenn though taking this as a sign just starts kissing nancy and she's like dude not right now but like come on dude Glenn, right? You're admonishing Glenn. No, Nancy. What? She's like, we're here for Tina. It's like, no, Tina's off getting I, uh... got. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can take a break. Like, you're well, not standing guard for Tina right now. I, I think we should be admonishing Glenn because he's like, hey, everyone's doing it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, all right. You know, I mean, come on. It's kind of ridiculous. But she does say that they're here for Tina. And he's like, why was she bothered by a stupid nightmare anyway? And Nancy's like, hey. He was very scary. (laughs) But they head inside and lock the door. Later that night, Glenn is tossing and turning on the couch as we hear Rod living up to his name (laughs) very loudly from upstairs. Glenn rolls over and says, morality sucks. The sounds, man, it was, are very comical. They are, and, and they're then, also very inconsiderate. Well, <laughs> yeah. like, let's just do the, it as loud as we can. Yeah, even the howl at the end. It's like, was that necessary? Yeah, necessary. 
What's sad is Wes Craven said this was based on a real life experience. When he first moved out on his own, he heard his neighbors doing it, and he oh. called he called it the most miserable night of his <laughs> life. <laughs> that sucks. It does. But upstairs, having done the deed, Rod asks Tina if she feels better, and they agreed to have no more fights. Then he says, no more nightmares for either one of us then. Tina's like, uh, when did you have a nightmare? And then he's like, you don't have the market cornered on nightmares. Men can have nightmares too. It's like nobody, nobody ever said <laughs> well, Why are Hold you so on, defensive? no. Because he is right, though. I, I was. <laughs> hey, th- look. I've we never have. Well, I'm just saying, look, I, I can understand because she's like, wait, you get scared, too. Well, yeah, we get scared, too. Of course, well, of course we That's do. That's not but how that played I out. Mean, she uh, said, I'm, you had a nightmare, too. Yeah, man, get out fucking night. Well, like, he I'm freaks sh- out. I'm well, sure he's he an would. asshole. Yeah. <laughs> I've never had. I've never been like, man, I had a nightmare last night. And a girl's Pussy. like, but you're a man. Yeah, wow. that's never, yeah, that's never happened no, to me. No, but I mean, <laughs> I, I see, see right there. Yeah. No, I'm uh, kidding. Uh, no, I'm kidding. Not. That's not a reaction at all. Well, we're going to move on because I'm very upset. <laughs> but <laughs> <laughs> we are in, I guess, Tina's room that Nancy's sleeping in. But she hears a thud at the window and picks up a crucifix before, I guess, falling back asleep. Maybe it's just me, hmm. but like, I don't know how. <laughs> It's comforting to have the crucifix with the actual Jesus on it. Like, I feel like that's a little much. I don't I'm, really unnerving. I'm not about a religious that. person. No, but I heard a joke a long time ago, and somebody said, "Do you think that's the one he wants to see <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> when he comes back?" It's like the symbol, okay, but like he's like, actually oh, on shit. it. Yeah. Like that's that's too it's a little. Uh, it's a it's bit a much. much for me. But again, I'm not religious, so I don't want to. <laughs> I'm sorry, everyone. Sorry. But we then get a shot peering up to the window of the master bedroom, where inside Tina is waking up again. She hears a rock hitting the window and tries to wake Rod, who does not budge at all. We hear someone whisper her name again, and she walks over to the window to look outside. A few more pebbles, we think, hit the window, one of them cracking the glass, but we see in the window is actually a tooth. That's crazy. It was? Yeah. Yeah. I I never thought it was a tooth before. No. uh -uh. On the commentary, Wes Craven said that it was an homage to Polanski in The Tenant when he pulled a tooth out of the wall. Oh. So I just thought it was just very odd because you don't. It's I just thought it was a pebble. I yeah, like I, I like how too. I said, "Oh, like I've seen that movie." Like, oh, right. Okay, <laughs> yes, yes. The, it's clear. I've seen Polanski, it. right? Yeah, mm-hmm. yes. Polanski. <laughs> I've never seen it either. Very so. well. <laughs> um, but we hear the voice again, and Tina asks, "Who do you think you are? Whoever you are," <laughs> which is like <laughs> right. very non-committal. Yeah. But back in Nancy's room, we see her sleeping in the bed, but above her we see something protruding from the wall. Just as we realize it's a face, we see hands on both sides push forward, stretching through the wall and hovering above Nancy as she sleeps. It looks so good it and looks so creepy. It looks amazing. Yes. Yes. I don't care and who you are. If you see some no. shit like that. <laughs> Not at all. Like, nope. And the score right here yeah. is really great oh, too. Yeah. We need to call it the score in general. Yes. This is a great yes. score. A lot of people put it up with Halloween as their favorite scores. Mm-hmm. Halloween's still my favorite, but this is it's really yeah, great. It's good shit. The incredible thing is that this is all practical effects. The best. Okay, mm-hmm. Yeah, agreed. Yeah. yeah. What's even crazier is that this was not the original plan. Really? Yes. The special effects guy randomly just bought a large sheet of spandex, brought it to set, <laughs> <laughs> and he was like, I have an idea. Stick your head through this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it's going to be a little weird, but trust Hear me. me out. They came up with it on the day of shooting. Oh, That's amazing. Well, yeah. But it's just incredible. Iconic. The light underneath. Yeah. I can't say enough about this. Yeah. But Nancy rolls over just as the figure recedes back into the wall. Nancy then wakes up once again, grabbing her crucifix, and then she checks the wall, even knocks on it to see that it's just a wall. Yeah. yeah. Downstairs, we see Tina making her way outside as the voice calls for her again. She asks who it is, making her way through the backyard and into the alley. A trash can lid loudly rolls out, startling her. But just then, we see a long shadow up against a wall, which gets Tina's attention. That silhouette. No, it's mm-hmm. it's a lot. Whew. And it's huge. Yeah. It's yeah. massive. But we then see a full silhouette of the man walking down the alley, with his arms stretching to both sides of the alley, which is leaving Tina no escape. Horrifying. This yeah. is yes. one of the one of the moments in the movie that as a kid I'm like, yeah. you can't get around that. No, like, no, I shouldn't no, be watching no. this. <laughs> I'm not old enough. For yeah, this. no. It's honestly I can't go into an alley without thinking about this movie no, now. Yeah, Very that's... 
just iconic. So alleys are done for me. They're out. <laughs> alleys, public restrooms. Yeah, I, can't, I can't go anywhere. <laughs> but he laughs as his finger knives scrape against the metal, creating sparks. Ugh, and it sounds awful. It's, mm-hmm. it's just the worst. You, you think a fork and knife on a dinner plate's bad, but <laughs> <laughs> Tina says, please, God. And then we finally see his face. Freddy Krueger, played by Robert England, holds his knives up to his horribly burnt face and replies, this is God. <sighs> uh, is it though? <laughs> I mean, no, but what a well, fucking I mean, scary they're... thing to say. Oh, yeah. If, and, he's, if he's controlling the dreams, I mean, I guess well, yeah, it is. In yeah. this instance. My thing is, it's funny, as a kid, I did not catch all this religious imagery and symbolism and discussion. Like, there's been no, like five or all. six instances mm-hmm. already in the film. I don't know if it means anything, if it's supposed to amount to something, or if it's just... Uh, Some yeah. creepy shit. Yeah. <laughs> But Tina tries to run away as Freddy chases her, admittedly a tiny Freddy stunt double substitute. Yeah. <laughs> that does look it so looks funny. It looks kind of hilarious. But she runs directly into the real Freddy, which is a, a dream logic, you know. But yeah. Tina runs back into the house screaming, and Freddy jumps out from behind a tree that he had no business hiding behind. <laughs> because it's so small, but yeah. he somehow just leaps out like, remember me? Well, yeah. We, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But he tells Tina to, and I quote, <laughs> watch this. <laughs> For some reason, she fucking does. But he holds out his hand and just chops off two of his fingers as green liquid squirts out of them, which really doesn't accomplish anything. <laughs> I will say... Hell of a showman. Yeah, great trick. The performance of it all. This is why I prefer Freddy, I guess. <laughs> Watch this. I, I get Shit, it. It's your out. dream. Yeah, but like he uh, he spares no expense. No. So, <laughs> like fingers, they're gone. What's you funny is he had to Check learn that the they grow shit. back. <laughs> like, he did that one time. He's like, this might be bad for right. me. <laughs> Is this really going to work in here? Mm-hmm. All Cuts right. one finger off. Sweet. Oh, shit. <laughs> can do whatever the hell I want. But... Tina tries to run back inside, and Freddy grabs her before she can. She screams for Nancy to open the door, but the two tumble back off the porch and onto a table. Freddy's now on top of her with his glove at the ready. She grabs his face, but literally peels it off, revealing a laughing skull underneath. (laughs) A tiny skull. Having a great time. (laughs) She screams even louder, which it is a tiny skull. It doesn't fit his head at all. (laughs) But we're not supposed to think that. Just... But as she screams, it wakes up Rod in real life. Rod hops out of the bed, and we see Freddy under the blankets with Tina. But when Rod pulls the blankets off the bed, Tina's alone, thrashing violently. It looked amazing, because he was there, and then he wasn't. Just gone. Yeah. And it does this like weird, you know, like when you're half asleep, and you're like, am I sleeping right now? Uh-huh. It kind of is reminiscent of that to me, where right. it's like, oh, yeah. she's dreaming but it's also for real. You know what I mean? Yeah, I feel like it's kind of, and this is, for me, is a credit to the editing Mm -hmm. because the way that they just splice these shots together, you're like, Freddy should be there. Yes. (laughs) But they're so good. It's just fantastic. But we see her shirt rip open and four slashes suddenly appear on her chest as blood just pours out. Rod watches as she begins to awkwardly float and flip around in the air. It looks so I, yeah. scary. It looks incredible. It looks impossible. I, especially for the no, time. Yeah. yeah. I'm like, how the, how the hell, hell did they? Yeah. They but, were really killing that girl. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this motherfucker's real. Yeah. <laughs> I like a lot this scene yes. because of that. Yes. Like you said, at the time and they're doing it, it's like, oh, that looks fucking It's unbelievable. Yes. And to know it's practical yeah it's, that's insane that's the thing but rod turns on the lamp and she crashes into him sending him to the floor he watches as she's dragged bloody from the wall to the ceiling they scream for each other and reach out as tina tries to get away pulling herself across the ceiling but then she falls dead to the bed and she rod and the room are all covered in blood i gotta tell you though if this shit were to happen to me please do more than just sit in the corner and call my name he reached out. He re- uh, <laughs> He's like, grab my hand what from am I 10 feet away. Do? Yeah. I'm right here. Oh, no. Just jump on top. He's like, no. Well, maybe you jump. Do something. Well, jump yeah, on the bed, yeah. maybe gr- try to grab her. He did nothing. Literally no, anything. I, I but the thing was, is that he honestly couldn't because the way that this was filmed. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's an entire set shifting and rotating until it's upside down. Oh, Basically, God, it looks so crazy. The ceiling was the floor and they kind of... It's funny because they told Amanda Weiss to just go with the room, but I think gravity's going to do that for you. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Not much of a but, choice. No, but I that's know. why he couldn't help because he's, he's got to stay where yeah, he is. Yeah. Don't move. Do not. You will die. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know, Rod, whatever, but uh-huh. I mean, that's got to be a hell of a way to wake up. Oh, yeah. absolutely. Like, he for real. Yeah. Here's his girlfriend screaming. He was just having the best time of his life. <laughs> he was. <laughs> and now this. But Nancy wakes up from all the screaming and tries to get into the room, but it's locked. Glenn joins her as we hear Rod shouting, who did this? I'll kill you. Well. <laughs> I mean, what else do you say? But they bust in and find Tina's dead body. Also, no sign of Rod, but the window is wide open. Not a good look, Rod. No. Not at all. Especially if all they heard was, I'll kill you. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and I want to point out, this is another instance of a false protagonist. Absolutely. Honestly, it kind of is a primer for Wes Craven with what he did in Scream. Which, That's true. You know, we talked about that already, but... That's true. It's honestly one of the best examples of it because... The first person we see full on is Tina. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So of course we assume she's going to be our protagonist. No. No. <laughs> <laughs> not quite. Think again, folks. Right, not anymore. <laughs> but in the next scene, we see Police Lieutenant Donald Thompson, played by John Saxon, being filled in on the crime by another officer as they're heading into the station. The officer says that they suspect Rod, calling him a musician type. <laughs> Which is interesting. Guilty. Yes. But they do go down his rap sheet and he's guilty. (laughs) (laughs) So Donald asks, he's like, what was she doing there? And the officer's like, well, she lives there. But as they head inside the office, he says he didn't mean Tina. He means Nancy, his daughter. Sitting in the office is Nancy, as well as her mother, Marge Thompson, played by Ronnie Blakely. Played by James Woods. (laughs) (laughs) What's that? (laughs) She looks so much like James Woods to me. I don't mean Uh, all the uh, yo mama jokes. I don't mean that's my last one, I swear. She looks like James (laughs) Woods. That's like your third one. You just hate the moms in this movie. Dee Snyder and James Woods. It's funny, you're kind of talking shit, but I listened to the director's commentary And they made some comments about her that were very surprising. Go on. (laughs) (laughs) Wes Craven said first, whenever she appeared on screen, he said, we're all going to be very polite, which is not good. (laughs) That doesn't sound good. (laughs) What's about to happen? um, Heather Langenkamp said something along the lines of, it's just insane to imagine John Saxon being with Ronnie Blakely. And something along those lines. And then... That's me. The director of photography <laughs> said something along the lines of, she didn't really work much after this, did she? And then oh, they laughed. <laughs> but then they tried to come up with a credit that she may have had after. But it was like, they didn't like her, I don't think. Yeah, oh, that doesn't sound man. like her. But I was like, shit. And then there's some stuff that comes up later that I'm like, damn. So they're just like openly <laughs> talking shit about her in the comments. Yeah, they're just roasting well, her and she's I not there. Watch this. I know. <laughs> yeah, I, but it was just a short little thing. And again, they didn't say anything outwardly mean, but it was just the tone of which they were saying it. Yeah. I was like, I don't think they liked working with her. Because they were like, and then she would get makeup done, but then she would leave and go redo it herself. And it was like, (laughs) damn, they didn't like working with her. Jeez. Obviously, I can't speak. And she wasn't there to be like, that's not true. (laughs) But I thought it was very surprising. That's mean. Typically, people try to be a little more PC on them. At least when they're literally being recorded (laughs) for something. Yeah, they're like, cut the. They they said, cut this part. No, I'm just kidding. (laughs) But Donald asks Marge what Nancy was doing there, and she answers smartly. She's like, what did she say? Something like, well, hello to you, too, or something. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, I feel like he could be a little more compassionate because she did just see her best friend Uh, murdered. murdered. Yeah. not get murdered. She saw, I guess, the corpse. The result of the the murder. (laughs) Which is not any better. I don't know why I'm doing a caveat (laughs) here. She's fine. She didn't see her die. (laughs) She'll be fine. (laughs) But after the smart-ass answer, the officer that was filling Don in on the whole thing leaves, and Donald checks in on Nancy. She says she's okay, and Donald says he knows it might not be the right time, but he wants to know why she was in the house with three people, including the delinquent Rod. (laughs) But Marge starts spilling the beans, saying Tina and Rod would get into fights and whatnot, but Nancy's like, it wasn't that serious. Marge says, well, maybe you don't think murder is serious. It's like, who the fuck said that? Come on. Nobody that's... said that. Uh... Can we let her grieve? That's too much, man. Nancy very emotionally clarifies that their fights weren't that serious. But then she says Tina had a nightmare that someone was trying to kill her, which is why they were there. 
Right now you feel like shit. <laughs> yeah. He's yeah. there for her friend and you're like, fuck. I'm sorry, too. <laughs> <laughs> we, a lot, we said a lot of things that were not. <laughs> but that next morning, Marge is watching the news and making herself a Sandra Lee breakfast. <laughs> it's an all vodka diet. Two shots of vodka. <laughs> Hold on. Before mm. you say anything, she's super bronze. <laughs> she is. Like you said that she was leaving to do her, or they were saying she, mm-hmm. who did that? She did? I, or... She's like, I'm not gold enough. Yeah. <laughs> I'll do right, it myself. You missed the spot. Yeah. I, you guys gave me original recipe. I want yeah, right. <laughs> extra crispy. <laughs> but on the news, they're discussing Tina's death, and they actually show her body bag, which, as we discussed previously, I don't think they're no. allowed to do that. Yeah. I was thinking the same thing. Like, that's a whole lot. There was yeah. even blood. They're like, look at this. Like, what <laughs> Check channel this is out. this? And you're going to get fined by the FCC. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah for real. But she shuts off the TV as soon as Nancy walks in. Nancy says that she's going to go to school because she wants to keep busy. It turns out she did not sleep the night before, but she says that she'll sleep in study hall and promises to be home right after school. As she heads outside, she notices a fucking (laughs) G-man standing across the street. (laughs) For real? Like, what's the opposite of inconspicuous? Is it conspicuous? He's just standing there. Yeah, with his sunglasses as if he's not clearly observing her. (laughs) Yeah. But she continues walking as some really neat music plays. She turns around, though, to see that the G-Man is gone. But before she can turn back, Rod leaps out of the bushes and grabs her, pulling her past some shrubbery and into seclusion. Again, Rod, not a good look. No, he and he's literally still all like from the night before. Yeah. He's shirtless. He's got his leather jacket he, on. No yeah, shoes. He has no his, shoes. Exactly. But he has jeans and a leather jacket. But he didn't think to grab his shoes. He, that jacket was expensive. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not leaving this. He's anywhere. like, they won't let me back into the sharks if, yeah, I, but- <laughs> if I don't have my jacket. But she asks Rod if he killed Tina, and he says he didn't, and that someone else was there. Nancy's incredulous, but Rod is emphatic in his denial. Out of nowhere, Donald, in uniform, (laughs) pulls a gun on Rod and tells him to back away from Nancy real easy, as if his ass depended on it. (laughs) I think his ass might just depend on it. Great line. (laughs) But Rod bails. He obviously doesn't care about his ass. And... (laughs) Nancy gets right in the line of fire, and Donald's like, Jesus Christ, (laughs) just disappointed. Rod runs barefoot down the street, but doesn't make it far as he's cornered by two police cars and eventually arrested without incident. They find his switchblade on him, though, which I guess they assume is the murder weapon. I mean, sure. They're like, open and shut case here. (laughs) Yeah. Nancy realizes that she was straight up used as bait, and Donald's like, well, what the hell were you going to school for anyway? (laughs) That made me laugh out loud because it's like she gets in trouble for she, doing yeah. for doing anything <laughs> yeah why were you caring after your friend why are you going to school let her live going to school yes. that made me laugh but she storms off pissed in school nancy's teacher played by lynn shay is giving a lesson on hamlet First of all, great to see Lin Shay. Yes, and I did not remember her being in this at all. Really? So that was a treat. I got very yeah. excited to see her. The funny thing is that Lin Shay is the sister of producer Robert Shay. Oh, shit. So it's kind of like a little cameo role. <laughs> That's really cool. But she talks about Hamlet probing for truth despite his mother's lies. I wonder if that'll come up later. Yeah. It, also. Are you going to talk about Halloween? Of course I am. How do I not? <laughs> I do. It's a major theme in the film in a classroom setting. I mean, I feel like we might have talked about this before. Maybe, maybe but, once or twice. But just as one of the students, played by Don Hanna, Daryl Hanna's brother. What? Yeah. <laughs> begins to read a passage from Julius Caesar, Nancy's eyes seem to be getting heavier and heavier. She hears someone call her name, and in the hallway, she sees Tina inside of a very bloody but clear body bag. It's fucked up. Very much. Like, that's just mean. Yeah. That's I mean, not okay. <laughs> <laughs> fantastic visual. No, it, it no, looks, it is. It looks great, but if I seen a couple of my friends like Seth or Donald in the bag, I'd be really confused <laughs> about what's going on. Confused, <laughs> not frightened. Well, like, mm, well, that weird. too. Yeah. But I mean, like, what are you guys? You guys doing aren't in there? usually in a body <laughs> bag. <laughs> <laughs> but she looks back to the classroom as the student continues reading the passage, which mentions bad dreams. It does and he sounds scary now yeah he changed Mm -hmm. how he was reading it. yeah and it's like this like surreal moment it creeps me out and i also wanted to expand more on them reading julius caesar Mm -hmm. but 
I should probably talk about that later. Okay. Well, I remember I asked you last night about that when we were watching it. Yeah. Well, I'm intrigued. <laughs> <laughs> it may be just me on some pseudo intellectual bullshit, but I mean, I may be making connections that aren't there, but I mean, we'll talk. <laughs> All right. Nancy turns back to the hall, but she just sees a pool of what looks like black blood in the hallway. She gets up to investigate, which better her than me. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Down the hallway, we see a trail of red blood with the body bag now on the ground. She calls out to Tina, but the legs of the body bag lift up and her hand flaps down lifelessly as she is pulled down the hallway by unseen hands. Scared the (laughs) shit out of me. It's probably my favorite shot in the film. Oh my God. It looks so good. Mm -hmm. So scary. So simple, too. And it's very (laughs) too much. Nancy runs around the corner, bumping into a girl in a striped sweater and knocking her down. (laughs) I wonder if that's going to be a problem. But (laughs) she asks Nancy for her pass, and Nancy's like, screw your pass. (laughs) But then Freddie's voice comes from the girl. She waves her clawed glove and tells Nancy not to run in the hallway. He's just looking out for her. (laughs) It's not safe, Nancy. Mm. Not with all that blood on the floor. Did you see that shit? Yeah. Nancy continues running, though, and heads downstairs as leaves fall around her. Again, dream shit. Yeah. (laughs) She calls out to Tina following the trail of blood. I'm sorry, but again, I'm not following a body bag around. (laughs) No. I mean, I understand if she doesn't, we don't have a movie, but don't (laughs) do it. No, I know. I know. (sighs) That's what I always think. I'm like, man, my horror movies would be so boring. It'd be very (laughs) short. Sit in class. Mm -mm. (laughs) No. not Not doing it. But she opens a door, and we hear water dripping. She pulls back a curtain, and she's now inside of the boiler room. Geography, again, it's a dream, makes no sense. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But as she makes her way inside, we hear heavy breathing, and we see Freddy's eye watching her. She calls out for Tina again, and Freddy steps out of the shadows. She asks who he is, and he raises his shirt and slashes open his chest to reveal <laughs> green ooze and maggots. It's not an answer, but okay. <laughs> okay, yeah. oogie boogie, but also... <laughs> Why does he keep hurting himself for clout? I don't. <laughs> it's part of the gig. I what don't do know. <laughs> well, his fingers, he's like, I'm still missing them shits. Yeah. So I got to try something new. But he just laughs and advances on Nancy. She opens a curtain to reveal a wall. So her exit is just disappeared. He chases her through the boiler room until she reaches another dead end. He slowly makes his way towards her, but she takes Glenn's advice and reminds herself that it's only a dream. She throws her arm against a pipe, burning herself, which wakes her up. Unfortunately, she wakes up screaming in the middle of class, embarrassing herself in front of everyone. I mean, at least she didn't like call her teacher mommy or something. Like, <laughs> I guess could it could have been, have been worse. worse. Yeah, that would suck. Oh, like, dude, especially real. in a high school brain. Yeah. You're like, I can never come back here. No, yeah. and that was... <laughs> right now, I just got to drop I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> that was quick thinking of her, though, because oh, I yeah. never would have thought of no, that. No, she's smart as shit, yeah. dude. Yeah. She's one of probably the smarter final yeah, girl protagonists, for sure. period. But the teacher says she'll call her mother and that everything's all right. But Nancy grabs her shit and she's like, I'm okay," and just leaves. She's not. No. (laughs) (laughs) But Nancy walks outside and kind of collects herself, but then begins to weep for a second. She notices, though, the burn mark on her arm from her dream, which is, to say the very least, peculiar. Uh, Quite. (laughs) Quite. Well, not to mention it's on the wrong side of her arm. It was your oh, arm. Oh, <laughs> you're not wrong. Because she it was on the outside yeah. where she burned her arm. Now, it's, now on it's on the inside. <laughs> Dreams Damn. are weird. Okay? Yeah. Yeah. She didn't remember it correctly. <laughs> Should have written it down when she first woke up. But <laughs> this leads her to visit Rod at the jail, who tells the story of Tina's murder again. He said he could see the cuts happening all at once, but he couldn't see anyone making them. <laughs> He says it was like there were four invisible razors, which gets Nancy's attention, obviously. Well, he's trying to describe it and like getting two on the nose. Yeah. He's like, it's all at once, you know, like if a guy had like <laughs> knives for fingers or something. <laughs> Word. Like, hmm, we I think, get it. Yeah. We get it. I think his name, he said his name was Fred. I don't su- I right. heard There's her by Fred, Fred right. Krueger. <laughs> but- his name tag said it and everything. <laughs> He thought it was just another nightmare, like the one he had before, and then he does start to describe Freddy to her, which is too much for Nancy, and she starts to leave. Before she leaves, though, she says that she thinks Rod is innocent. Interestingly, and I hope he's better now, 
I read that Nick Corey revealed that he would snort heroin between oh, takes. Oh shit! God damn. And He's on method. The, uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> on the commentary, Heather Langenkamp was like, "He was so intense during this scene, and specifically, this was one of the scenes." So she just thought it was a great performance. Oh, that's so <laughs> sad. But he was out, like on it. Well, wow. I hope he got better. I that's hope so too. Awful. But that night, Nancy's in the bath singing the jump rope song to herself. I'd be like, I want to distract myself. I don't need to be singing this shit, dude. But Repress it. (laughs) Exactly. She starts to fall asleep, and we see the iconic shot of Freddy's glove reaching up from underwater between her legs, only to recede when her mom knocks on the door. (laughs) Like, oh, shit. Oh, shit, dude. Where'd that come from? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Too fast, too fast. Yeah, my bad, my bad. But... Marge tells Nancy not to fall asleep in the tub and that she's heated up some warm milk for her. But Nancy's like, warm milk? Ugh. <laughs> like, come on, man. Warm milk. Uh, one crack rock, please. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm going the other way with yeah, it. I'm not trying to be lulled to sleep. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Unfortunately, Nancy does fall asleep, though, and she's pulled deep underwater by Freddy. She fights back to the surface, screaming for her mother. Her mom does break in, just as Nancy wakes up and gets out of the tub. Again, the visuals are fantastic. Yeah, no, yeah. they really are. But that, she's like, no, nah, everything's cool. That's <laughs> yeah. fucking scary. Oh, it that, is. Very, very. That yeah. looks like, and I like that the hole for the tub stayed there. Yes. yes. It wasn't like, like it went away it. or it kind of no. got dark. It was like, it was there. Oh. Again, all practical. The bathtub was on the second floor of the house, so they dug it out and uh, built a tank underneath it. So that's how you see her kind of where she's, like her legs are still uh-huh. underneath, but she's pulling on the side yes. of the tub. But the actual scenes under the water, according to the commentary, were filmed in a swimming pool, and they covered it up just enough to where there was a small <laughs> like that's window so of a bathtub. Cool. Again, using that budget, like, yeah. you geniuses. Yeah. They don't make them like this anymore. Yeah. <laughs> But before she leaves the bathroom, Nancy finds a bottle of pep pills in the medicine cabinet and heads to her bedroom. In the next scene, we see her dozing off while watching Sam Raimi's The Evil Dead on television. I was like, hell yeah, that's (laughs) Evil Dead. But I noticed and I uh, read on IMDb that uh, the movie is the end of the movie, but the sound that you hear is from the tree rape scene. So (laughs) I I don't know. That's weird. I don't know why it doesn't line up like that. No. Why wouldn't you? Sense. Yeah, why wouldn't you just have the audio from the end of the movie? It's still frightening. I don't <laughs> no, know. It yeah. Is, yeah. Just do the yeah. That doesn't make any sense. I did read on IMDb as well that this was kind of like a little uh, hat tip to mm-hmm. Sam Raimi because in The Evil Dead, there's a poster for The Last House on the Left. Oh, oh how cool! So he's like, I see you. Yeah, you know, All right? Thank you. Yeah, but. She switches off the TV and looks out the window, and Glenn is right outside, having climbed up the trellis. This reminds me of Scream. Yes, that's all I thought about. I'm like, well, she's going to let him inside like Billy Loomis, and she does, (laughs) but she does say something a little expositional. She's like, you know, sometimes I wish you didn't live right across the street. (laughs) It's like, oh, well, he lives across the street. He lives across the street. But he goes inside and immediately reclines on her bed, but she tells him to take the chair instead. He says he heard what happened in English class that she freaked out and then asks her about the burn on her arm, which she says happened in English class, but then doesn't elaborate. Like, what? <laughs> what were you guys doing in there? She fe- I fell asleep in class, so she burned me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. She's mean, man. Don't take Mrs. Smith for fucking... <laughs> Mrs. Yeah. Shea. Yeah. <laughs> she says she hasn't slept and then looks at herself in the mirror saying that she looks 20 years old. You bitch. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Again, obviously an inside joke is like we said, she was about 20 years old. But she asks Glenn if he believes that people can have premonitions in their dreams, and he says no. He also says he doesn't believe in the boogeyman when asked, and seeing right through her line of questioning, tells her that Rod killed Tina. She asks if he'll stand guard for her while she sleeps, and Glenn reluctantly agrees. She tells him how serious it is, and he promises not to screw it up. We'll check in on that in a second. (laughs) In the next scene, we see Nancy leaving her house in the dark. She walks down the street as eerie music plays and mist like creeps across her front lawn. It looks fantastic. It does. But as she walks further, she calls out to Glenn to make sure he's still watching. He steps out from some trees (laughs) to confirm that he is. Still here. Yeah. But then as she continues on, he just recedes back into the trees. It's like Homer into the bushes. (laughs) 
She's supposed to be awake. How the hell are you answering me? I don't, I don't understand, understand I don't how, how that's happening works. at all. Logistically, I understand we got to suspend a lot of disbelief, <laughs> yeah. but that was a little <laughs> odd even for me. But Nancy makes her way to the police station and looks into the window that just so happens to be right above Rod's cell. The second she looks inside, though, fucking Freddy is making his way into the room. Yeah. It's like they had a plan to meet here. <laughs> but she calls out to Glenn and he doesn't respond. We see Freddy walk right through the bars like it's nothing, and then he lifts Rod's blanket off of his sleeping body, looks up to Nancy in the window, and chuckles. Nancy calls out to Glenn again, but then she sees Tina's body standing in the body bag. A fucking millipede falls out of Tina's mouth, and there's a bunch of muddy-looking snakes all around her. Yeah. Too much. It's yes. Too much. Too much. It's like, can you stop showing me my dead friend, please? <laughs> <laughs> I'd really appreciate yes. it. Yes. But Nancy asks if Glenn is there, to which Freddie responds, I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't well, ask No, for you. we said well, he Glenn. He didn't want her to feel alone. Yeah, he's like, <laughs> is that okay? I mean, better than nobody, right? right. <laughs> but he jumps out, scaring the shit out of her and beginning a chase sequence. Nancy then makes her way back inside her house and closes the door behind her. As she runs up the stairs, her feet get stuck in the steps like it's made out of marshmallow cream or something. <laughs> <laughs> that's real dream shit yeah, dude. yes no joke is. the way that i feel like we all have these shared experiences and the way that we can all relate mm -hmm. to like it's so good they do it so it's just well so yeah. good. it's like oh i've been there also yeah. the transition I got marshmallow on my feet sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> the transitioning into dreams in this yes. i really love because sometimes it's like does she fall asleep yeah. like but if that's how it no, is in yeah. real life yes, in yes. real life you're like am i sleeping yeah, yeah. <laughs> But it, I I did read on IMDb it wasn't uh, marshmallow cream it was pancake batter. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so that's interesting. But Freddie breaks the glass in the door and wearing a mask of Tina's face calls out to her before tearing it off to be like, "No, nah, it's just me." <laughs> <laughs> that first, that first shot of him in the mask, I was positive that that was a Michael Myers mask. Yeah, we really it we paused it. I, I yeah. yeah, interesting. It looked just like it, and then it shows Nancy, and then it goes back, and I was like, "Oh, it's Tina." But that for I swear to God, I'm gonna have to go back. <laughs> <laughs> That's very intriguing. It looked just like it. Maybe it's a little Easter egg. <laughs> yeah. But Nancy finally makes her way up the stairs, calling out to Glenn. When she gets back in her room, she sees that Glenn is crashed the fuck out. It made me think of um, the Treehouse of Horror <laughs> yeah. when he's like, when Lisa falls asleep and she's like, <laughs> I'm not asleep. I'm just resting my eyes. Oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> like, God damn it, Glenn. <laughs> Maybe that's why she saw him earlier and he's like, right yeah. up. <laughs> right here. But she looks into a mirror, reminding herself that it's just a dream. But then Freddy crashes through the mirror and they tussle on and off her bed. Freddy slashes a pillow, sending feathers falling all over the place, which again, great visual. Yes. yes. Her alarm clock goes off, finally waking her up, and her screams wake up Glenn as well. She's like, you motherfucker. <laughs> she goes, Glenn, you bastard. <laughs> <laughs> he had one job, dude. Yeah. Guard me. Just stay That's away. It. What you... And he's like, excuse me. Good night. <laughs> oh, she's asleep. Close my eyes real quick. <laughs> she won't know. Well, <laughs> I've been there way too many times. Not in that specific situation where like a girl is like, can you watch me sleep? <laughs> you never, been there? That has never happened. But where you close your eyes and you're like, okay, just for a second. And then it's fucking morning. Yeah. So I get it. But then her mother knocks on the door, which sends Glenn out the window. And Nancy tells him <laughs> to wait outside on the trellis because she's not done with his ass. I'm not there demeaning you. <laughs> But she shuts the window before hopping back in bed. When her mom comes in, she tells her it was just a bad dream, but she's going to go back to sleep. Her mom leaves and she looks at the window, which is open again, and she sees a single feather falling and looks concerned. I thought another nightmare thing was going to happen. Even yeah. Maybe yeah. like a jump scare or something, but literally they just go to the next scene. Yeah. Like, you didn't <laughs> so see <that>. anyway. <laughs> <laughs> in the next scene, Nancy and Glenn head inside the police station. Nancy asks the officer on duty to see Rod and tells him it's urgent, and he looks very offended at Nancy's tone. <laughs> He's like, how dare you? But inside Rod's cell, we see his sheet twisting on its own, crawling up his body like a snake. Only yes. It's, it's incredible. Yeah, yeah, it looks great. But it twists around his neck. Not a good thing. <laughs> Back at the desk, Donald walks out and is like, what the fuck are you doing? He doesn't say that. He's like, <laughs> yeah. God damn it, Nancy. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, what are you doing here? And Nancy says that she's there just to make sure that Rod's okay. And they're like, he's sleeping like a baby. He's not going to go yeah. anywhere. 
But she asks her dad very politely to just go check on him, which he reluctantly agrees to do. I got to say, honestly, Donald is very busy with his job, obviously, but he Mm -hmm. seems like a pretty decent father. He does. He does. Back in Rod's cell, though, Rod opens his eyes and screams for help as the sheet has formed an entire noose around his neck. It drags him out of bed, twists up through the window, pulls him up with it, hanging him. He dies immediately. Yeah. <laughs> yes, he. I think he exhaled before this happened. <laughs> there was nothing There was left. nothing there. But <laughs> Donald, Nancy, Glenn, and the other officer head inside to find Rod's dead body hanging, and the two cops pull him down. They were just there, though. How did they not hear him screaming for help? I don't know. Like, he, he they walked in right as he was like, He oh. was. He's like, help, help. <laughs> I'm uh, dead. Yeah. Like, this is open shut case <laughs> again. <laughs> Suicide. And yeah. why is he there so long and they hadn't, like, processed him yet? Why is he still in street clothes? I thought That's a great same question. Thing. Yeah, he should have already been in a jumpsuit or in something. You don't get to keep that leather jacket. No, no. hell no. Not in Springwood. Yeah. <laughs> They're like, he looks really cool. <laughs> Let him keep it. Let him it. do it. But they lower him to the ground, and it's obviously too late to save him. In the next scene, though, we are at Rod's funeral. Oddly, Tina didn't get a funeral, but okay. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> That's true. But the preacher's kind of a dick. He's like, look, those who live by the sword die by the sword. I'm like, hey, hey yeah. a boy died. <laughs> like, we don't need okay. that. Yeah. 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 And also, Nancy's in a bright blue polka dot I, dress. Yeah. I guess that's funeral attire. That, that threw me off as well. I was very confused. Like, this is a dream, right? No. <laughs> well, maybe they were just trying to like, because she's supposed to be young. So uh-huh. maybe she's trying to make her look young, I guess. Or like a kid. <laughs> They're like, like nobody black. Didn't, I know, but maybe, you know, it's like, well, look, her parents dressed her or her mom or so. I don't know. I mean, they're trying to keep <laughs> like with the she's illusion. Only she's only 15. Nancy is six. Uh, yeah. <laughs> there they're you just go. de right? her six. as the movie goes on. <laughs> Nancy, you are five years old. <laughs> But after the funeral, Nancy tells Don that the killer is still on the loose. She says she doesn't know who it is, but that he's burned, wears a weird hat, a dirty red-green sweater, and uses knives like giant fingernails. Again, we're dragging the sweater. But (laughs) her parents are sweating like that meme of Jordan Peele. Dude, no joke. (laughs) They have no poker face. Why do y'all look so nervous? They cannot hide it at (laughs) all. Because she's asking questions. "Hmm." Uh, I don't know what you're talking about. Get in the car. (laughs) He does. He just fucking shoves her in the car. (laughs) Like, this is not going to come up again later. But he's like, you get Nancy home. And Marge is like, I'm going to go do you one better. I'm going to get her some help. Yeah. But as she's driving away with her, Nancy's looking back like she's being kidnapped. <laughs> and her eyes yeah. are like, help. <laughs> I'd be concerned. Uh, like, yeah. What do you mean you're getting her help? help? What the hell does that mean? Lobotomy? Or- <laughs> yeah. Fuck. In the next scene, we're at the Katya Institute for the Study of Sleep Disorders, which is named after Robert Che's daughter. Aww. Okay, my question. Hmm. She has seen, let me be specific before you call me out. Okay. She has seen the dead <laughs> bodies of two of her friends. Okay. She didn't see them killed. She saw the <laughs> right. dead bodies that of two That was an of accident. Her I didn't mean to <laughs> I mean to jump in earlier. My idea of getting her help would be counseling. Right. Therapy, yeah. a psychiatrist, not we got to work on your sleep. But, like I don't because but, that seems right. Like yeah. that's what's bothering her. That's is what's the causing the sleep disorder. Let's not make her go to sleep. Well, like, let's that, figure out that why too. But I think we need to get to the root of the problem. Exactly, which is her dead friends. Exactly. It's not like I don't know what's wrong with this kid. She won't sleep. It's you like well, sleep two of her friends well, got yeah. murdered. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. And, counseling. Counseling. But also, if we just took her to a therapist, we wouldn't be able to have this very clear homage to The Exorcist. <laughs> very fair. <laughs> so here we are. Nancy is being hooked up to a bunch of monitors and asked why they couldn't just give her a pill to stop her from dreaming. Dr. King, played by Charles Fleischer, explains to her that everyone has to dream or else they'll go crazy. Is that true? I know I've read something like that before. Like you have to, like your brain has to have some kind of activity or some shit or like you're mm. getting rid of memories that you don't need or things you don't need. Like your brain does all kinds the of brain weird shit. Well, yeah, so it does. Where, yeah. weird. It's the best and worst thing that ever that happened brain. to us. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody <laughs> once told me, they're like, did you know the brain named itself and my fucking head exploded? God <laughs> <damn it>. <laughs> <laughs> Also, the nurse in this scene is played by Mimi Craven, who was Wes Craven's wife at the time. <laughs> That's cool. On the commentary, he's like, and there's my ex-wife. I was like, oh, oh, oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> but Nancy reluctantly agrees to go to sleep with Marge kissing her on the forehead before everyone leaves the room. 
Dr. King and Marge observe Nancy through glass in another room filled with machines. She fell asleep really quick. I don't know if I could... She's exhausted. <laughs> yeah, she's... I, well, I know, but I mean, god damn. I can't do that. Yeah, no. I guess I got to stay up for a week right? and maybe I can finally get some shut-eye. After some monitoring, though, Dr. King says that he doesn't see any kind of pathology and says her condition might just be from the recent loss of her friends. Nay. You think? Mm. He's like, you really should have taken her to a therapist. <laughs> But as Nancy's sleeping, Dr. King explains to Marge that there's still no explanation of what dreams actually are or where they come from. But as Nancy slips into REM sleep, her heart rate increases mildly, but everything seems okay for a second. By the way, I say REM sleep. My professors in college said REM sleep, but dude yeah. in the movie says REM sleep. So fucking <laughs> Michael Stipe. That's me in the corner. Yeah. <laughs> That's Rod in the corner, though. <laughs> But after that second, the machines start going insane, almost like a Richter scale during an earthquake like Tina predicted. Ooh. Oh. Good catch. Thank you. I'm proud. But <laughs> <laughs> Nancy starts violently thrashing in bed. The three of them, it's Marge, Dr. King, and the nurse, burst into Nancy's room as she wakes up. Dr. King tries to shoot her up full of some sleepy juice, but she pushes, like, <laughs> she fucking pushes him back, and he, almost like she got powers from that five minutes of sleep or something. <laughs> but when she does, we notice that she has a large cut on her arm, and she also has a gray streak in her hair. Yes. Pretty love cool it. looking, love honestly. It, love it. She's turning into, was it Rogue? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but more than that, she pulls Freddie's hat up from under the covers, saying that she brought it from out of her dream. Marge grabs the hat and looks absolutely stunned. Doesn't that tell you that something is actually happening yeah. here? Yeah, because I don't think she brought a hat no. from no. and just kept it the whole time. <laughs> this will convince them. They're hooking up the monitors and she's like, I got to keep this. <laughs> no. Where do I put this? That hat? too. And like, I know he was trying to calm her down and give her something to sleep. But you just seen what happened when exactly. she was asleep. Maybe Why would not you not? Yeah, yeah. maybe don't put idea. her back to sleep. In the next scene, we're back at the Thompson household. Nancy walks into the kitchen where Marge is on the phone telling someone about the whole Nancy pulled a hat out of her dream situation. But as Nancy walks in, Marge quickly gets off the phone and then hides a bottle of vodka behind her back. <laughs> yes, mom is acting sus. Yeah. yeah. See, at this point, though, I was like, okay, we get it. She's an alcoholic. Yeah. Like, they're a little heavy handed with this. It almost gets comical later. It reminds me of Black Christmas yes. almost. <laughs> but it's very funny to me. Nancy grabs a coffee, downing the whole cup black like a goddamn champion. <laughs> Marge assumes that Nancy didn't get any sleep last night and says that she needs to. Nancy's like, or what? I'll go even crazier? And Marge is like, look, I don't think you're crazy, but you got to stop drinking coffee. Like, I don't think that's the <laughs> problem not here. the problem, No. Lady. Marge says that she threw the hat away and says she doesn't know where Nancy found it or what she's trying to prove. Nancy awkwardly puts her arm against the fridge to emphasize her point. It's just really odd blocking <laughs> yeah. that I had to call it out. On commentary, Heather Langenkamp said that they worked through this blocking like a lot. And I'm like, well, maybe one more, <laughs> one more, one more rehearsal. But she says that she's trying to prove that Rod didn't kill Tina or himself and that someone is after them in their dreams. She pulls Freddy's hat out of a drawer, says it's real, and for Marge to feel it. Freddy... <laughs> Even wrote his damn name in it. <laughs> Her mom is a horrible liar. Yeah. Too. Oh, yeah. So I threw, threw it away. Yeah. Yeah. It's right, it's right there. there. <laughs> but she tells Marge, she's like, if you know something, spill it. But Marge just tells her to get some sleep. Nancy's like, hey, maybe I should just grab that bottle and get drunk like you. And she gets slapped in the face. And she didn't deserve. And also when they're <laughs> no. going back and forth, she calls her mama, which she has never done in this movie before. That is very strange. I didn't even catch that. Yeah. Marge finally says that Freddy Krueger is dead and he can't get her. She's like, you knew about this dude the whole time and you were acting like I made him up. And she tells her to get some sleep and grabs her bottle of vodka. <laughs> <laughs> Nancy snatches the bottle and screams, screw sleep, before smashing it on the floor. She comically tosses the hat at Marge before leaving. Yeah. Her. <laughs> that was insult to injury. So screw your hall pass and screw yes. sleep. In the next scene, though, Nancy is walking with Glenn on a bridge. He's got a bag of fast food saying he eats when he's anxious since he can't sleep. This, again, begins with an extremely long shot that slowly zooms and reminds me, again, of the cinematography of John Carpenter's Halloween. Yeah. Right? That's fair. Also, the way he has that fast food bag perched on that railing really made me nervous. 
<laughs> That's what's scary. It's like you're <laughs> eating your lunch your like burger. that. Uh. <laughs> but Glenn asks her if she's ever heard about the Balinese way of dreaming. He says that when they have nightmares or encounter a monster, they turn their back on it, which takes away its energy and it disappears. Nancy asks what happens if they don't do that, and Glenn's like, well, then I guess they don't wake up. All right. Thanks, Glenn. <laughs> <laughs> Nancy's leafing through a book at this point, which Glenn then snatches away from her to reveal it's an instruction manual on booby traps. He's like, what the fuck are you reading this for? And she's like, I'm into survival and just walks off. All right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Good talk. And so Glenn's just left alone to eat his in and out burger or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but in the next scene, Nancy returns home at dusk to find all the windows on her house now have bars on them. She is pissed. Well... I, I just can't. With Are those mom. even safe to have on your house? I don't like that? think so. <laughs> I mean, I get, I get the, the thing. The zoning board? Have yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I get it. You're trying to keep people from breaking a- into your house, but what if something happens inside? And now you're... Yeah, now you can't get out. Hmm, I Marge wonder if that might come into yeah, play yeah. later. <laughs> didn't think that through, though. Hmm. Marge does explain that it's for security. When Nancy asks, from what? She says, it's not from what, but from whom? I love that pose that she's holding when yeah. Nancy comes in. Yeah, <laughs> she's, so she knew it was. <laughs> she's been waiting. Yeah. She looks like a full blown villain. Yeah. Now. Yeah. No, yeah. Like, who am I supposed to fear? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the crispy lady? Or... <laughs> <laughs> but she tells her to come down to the cellar and that she'll explain everything. In the cellar, Marge opens up the furnace and sits down next to it. She explains that Fred Krueger was a child murderer who killed at least 20 kids in the neighborhood. She reaches into the furnace, pulling out something wrapped in rags. She explains that someone forgot to sign a search warrant, and it allowed Freddy to go free. He got off on a technicality? Uh, Apparently. And also 20 kids from one neighborhood? That's That's like every kid in the neighborhood. (laughs) (laughs) And diversify your bonds, man. (laughs) After this, a bunch of parents tracked him down to an old abandoned boiler room after the police let him go. They poured gasoline all around it and set the place on fire. She reiterates that Freddy can't get Nancy because mommy killed him. This is where I had kind of drawn parallels between Freddy and Julius Caesar. Hmm. And again, this may be this may be a bit much, but <laughs> Brutus and the co-conspirators all rallying and killing Caesar. Uh-huh. Spoiler alert if you haven't Oh, man, I was going to read it (laughs) this week. And the parents all becoming co-conspirators and coming after Freddy. Right. So, like, in his narrative, you know what I mean? Like, nobody's a villain in their own story. Of course not. So, eh, that's just a thought. No, that's, yeah. I never even thought of that. Because as I was watching the classroom scene, I'm like, this has to fit in somewhere. Why would you choose? I may have shoehorned it. (laughs) I'll allow it. (laughs) It kind of fits. But Marge says that she even took his knives, unwrapping the rags to reveal his glove. She tells Nancy that it's all okay and that she can sleep. I'm like, no, nothing is clearly not okay. I don't feel safe, Mom. (laughs) She didn't know anything about this, and she's dreaming about him. How is now you telling her? How is that okay? Yeah, it doesn't fix anything. Shit's been popping off in the dream (laughs) world all week. (laughs) She makes you feel even. Two of her friends are dead. (laughs) Even more scared. It's like, oh, you did this. Yes. Right? And so now why I'm like, you definitely have coming here. What the fuck? Specifically after yeah. me now, because you <laughs> murdered him. Thanks, mom. Maybe you can sleep because yeah. this shit's off your chest, but <laughs> I'm fucking grabbing more coffee. <laughs> but later that night, we see Glenn is in his bedroom watching TV, but also listening to music with headphones. Multitasking. Yes. <laughs> he must be a Gemini. <laughs> the phone rings and it's Nancy. He stands by the window so they can see each other, and Nancy says that she hasn't slept in seven days, which is not true, because she did sleep at the, <laughs> yeah. at the, thing. At the thing. And also, I know I had a similar sentiment in sleepaway camp, but bring back male crop tops. Oh, my God. <laughs> Make them acceptable again. You start your petition, and <laughs> I'm not adhering to that law, no. though. <laughs> Gotta be honest with you. But she tells Glenn that she knows who the killer is and says that if he gets her, she's sure that Glenn is next. But instead of expressing concern for Nancy, Glenn's like, me? Why would anyone want to kill me? (laughs) He does. He's like, it's great. But she tells him that she plans to pull Freddy out of her dream, and she asks him to help her nail him when she pulls him out. Her words, by the way, I know (laughs) phrasing is not great. (laughs) But he doesn't believe it's possible, but he agrees to meet her on the porch at midnight. 
She tells him, though, whatever you do, don't fall asleep. He gets off the phone and gets back in bed. He just hangs up. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't even say really anything. He's just he like, doesn't even say yes. No, and his track record is not <laughs> no. great. So Glenn has narcolepsy. <laughs> <laughs> but later that night, Nancy's popping pep pills like Tic Tacs. She is going to walk away from this whole thing with the drug problem. Yeah. Oh, it's real bad. But my thing is, if her whole plan is to go to sleep to get Freddy, why is she popping pep pills? Damn oh, it. Yeah. That's a good question. It's like, Not I, forget it. Yet. Never mind. Yeah. <laughs> At Glenn's house, his mom comes to check on him, but he's crashed out. Fucking failure, dude. <laughs> Can't stay awake to save his life. No. She wakes him up to ask him how he's watching TV and listening to records at the same time. He gives a smart ass answer and then she tells him to go back to bed. It's like, you woke me up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just let me sleep. Yeah. But she says it's almost midnight and then leaves. At the Thompson house, Marge puts Nancy to bed, telling her that the nightmare is over and taking all of her coffee and coffee paraphernalia. <laughs> she had a whole pot. She did. Yeah. <laughs> she shuts off the lights and closes the door. But as soon as she does, Nancy snaps into action, pulling a secret coffee maker <laughs> out of a side hatch and immediately pouring a cup and taking a drink of the good stuff because it was already brewed. Yeah, it was already. <laughs> <laughs> this is big me energy. Yeah. Yes, it's fantastic. I, I have that written right there. Really? Yeah. <laughs> But she heads to her closet and changes clothes. She looks out her window to see Glenn's parents basically peeping at her from their porch. Yeah, that was a little weird. It's a little yeah. weird. It's like, why is... And he does not look happy. No. Though. And he's not happy. No. He says that he thinks that Nancy's a lunatic and doesn't want Glenn hanging out with her anymore. What did she do? I don't what? know. Her <laughs> friends died. She's lost why is yeah. friends. Yeah. They're like, we heard what happened in English class. <laughs> <laughs> That shit follows you, Nancy. <laughs> Back in Nancy's room, the wound on her arm is bleeding through the bandage for some reason, and she wipes it. I thought maybe a bit of foreshadowing for what's to come. Mm. She throws on a jacket to make her exit, but looks into the hallway before she does. She sees her mom pulling another bottle of vodka from a linen closet, and it's like, yes, we get it she's, again. Know, she's like a cartoon drunk it's, at yes. this point. Marge takes a loving swig of that spicy water, and <laughs> <laughs> Nancy heads back into her room, calling Glenn on the phone. Glenn's mother answers the phone, though, and Glenn's dad snatches it away, telling Nancy that Glenn's asleep and she can call him tomorrow. He says, you got to be firm with these kids and then takes the phone off the hook and they leave the room. She only called once. Yeah, I don't yeah, know that I it know. was necessary to take the damn phone off no. the hook. And that's not helping. No. no. <laughs> what if there's an emergency outside yeah, no of Nancy? Yeah. Like, you got to come pick me up. I'm yeah. <laughs> They're after me. The wolves are after me. It's like, dude, dude. <laughs> yeah. The wolves. I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. <laughs> it's Rod. It's yeah, Rod's it's family. <laughs> But Nancy paces around her room, hoping that Glenn hasn't fallen asleep. But then her phone rings and she answers it, thinking it's Glenn, but instead she hears a bunch of scraping noises. She hangs up and pulls the phone from the wall. Then she says, oh, brilliant. What if Glenn tries to call? Because we're too dumb to realize it's yeah. bad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, no. I thought that was a good thing she did that. She goes to leave her room, but the phone rings again. She inches her way toward it, finally picking it up. On the other end, Freddie says, I'm your boyfriend now, Nancy. And we see that his mouth is now part of the <laughs> phone and his tongue flicks out and licks her mouth. She smashes the phone and steps on it, screaming. Nancy says, my boyfriend, because we need to hear her say that to know that Glenn is in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> my real boyfriend. Exactly. Not the one that just claimed. <laughs> <laughs> but she runs downstairs and tries the front door and it's locked. Her mother, absolutely trashed, tells Nancy that she's going to get some sleep tonight, even if it kills her. In Glenn's room, he's out like a light, just as the broadcast he was watching ends. And at the end, I noticed that hmm. the call letters were KRGR, On the which thing? is Kruger. <laughs> <laughs> so good. That is. Again, you got they reward you for paying attention. Yeah. But unfortunately for Glenn, Freddie's arm reaches out from Glenn's bed, wrapping around him and pulling him into the bed as Glenn screams. It looks insane. Yeah. It's unbelievable. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's unbelievable. I mean, he took the TV and the radio <laughs> yeah, with he them. Did. <laughs> He's like, I might need these yeah. down here in the boiler. <laughs> but Nancy screams for Glenn from her living room, and then we see gallons upon gallons of yeah. blood just spewing up from the hole in Glenn's bed onto the ceiling. His mother walks in and screams in horror. The only thing I can guess is that 
was the room upside down? Yes, it yeah. was. Holy, that looks fucking insane. Yeah. Yeah. It looks so good. They explained that Johnny Depp was pulled into a pit, but then for the blood, the room was all flip Man. side down, flip side down, upside down. <laughs> <laughs> and they sprayed about 80 gallons of blood. Damn. The, pro- the problem, though, because the room was rotated, you know, the blood was so heavy that it started to rotate the room again. <gasps> And so oh, that's why shit. you see at the end of the scene, yeah. the blood is moving to the left because yes, the room has oh, started to right, rotate right. again. And they're like, and we just cut it real quick. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, damn. When blood put that thing down, flipped it in yeah. reverse. <laughs> <laughs> in the next scene, we see an ambulance arrive at Glenn's house and immediately the paramedics grab a stretcher out of the back. A man on the scene tells them they won't need a stretcher, but they'll need a mop. I'm like, Glenn's parents are right yeah. there. Yeah, real sensitive. Yeah. Donald arrives on the scene and the officer on the scene tells him that he had to call him because he's never seen anything like this in his life. It's like, you want to see some freaky shit? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, this isn't anything professional. It's just, this is nuts. Yeah. But Donald looks up to his daughter's window and they solemnly wave at each other. I feel like he was like, why is my daughter in a cage? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah I didn't sign off on that. But we see that they're putting buckets down in the living room of Glenn's house because the blood is leaking through the ceiling. Glenn's father sees it, which he shouldn't have to. No. No. At no. all. But he goes and he takes a breather that he deserves. Donald gets a call on the phone from Nancy and she tells him that she knows what happened, but tells him to listen very carefully. She says she's going to get Freddy Krueger and she wants Donald to be there to arrest him when she brings him out. She tells him to come there and break the door down in exactly 20 minutes. Interestingly, he agrees to it without protest, but then he tells her, Get yourself some sleep. Yeah, yeah, I feel like he was like, He's yeah, yeah, Nancy, her. okay, yeah, sure, sure. Yeah, I'll be there 20 minutes, yeah, whatever. Yeah, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> Do you but, know what's happening over here? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Donald tells the other officer to watch their house and to call him if he sees anything funny. At their house, I'm seeing some funny shit because Nancy is putting together a shit ton of booby traps from her little bastard home defense Yeah, yeah she got all Rambo <laughs> with She's the, going yeah. full home alone. It's, yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> It's unbelievable. There's wire to trip him. There's something with a light bulb that she's doing. And she even rigged a goddamn sledgehammer to to whack Freddy. But Donald takes a peek into Glenn's room and really doesn't know what to make of it. The officer said that the coroner has been puking in the bathroom since he saw it. And I'm like, maybe you're not cut out for this line of work. (laughs) (laughs) But back at the Thompson house, Nancy is putting her mother to bed. Marge admits that she should have told her about Freddy sooner, but it's a little late for that dog. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> it really is. like yeah, seriously like yeah maybe don't monday morning quarterback it now no, no it's too late <laughs> she tells nancy she's like you face things and that's your gift but sometimes you have to turn away too kind of reminiscent of glenn's balinese talk i'd say yeah but marge pulls out a big ass bottle of vodka from i guess under her pillow <laughs> no. i don't know she uses it as a teddy bear yeah, just... <laughs> it's comforting But she doesn't drink it. She takes it and she puts it on the nightstand. Nancy tells her she loves her and Marge responds in kind. She kisses her goodnight, turns off the light and leaves. This is something very interesting that Wes Craven brought up on the commentary, which is that they've kind of reversed roles here. Clearly. She's now kind of the mother of the situation and Marge has kind of become the child. Yes. Even taking her bottle away from her so she can go to sleep. Good point. It's very interesting. But Nancy watches as the paramedics leave with, I guess, buckets of Glenn. I don't know what. (laughs) But (laughs) Nancy gets into bed and says that whole now I lay me down to sleep prayer. Mm -hmm. Which is really creepy. Uh, Yeah. Honestly, I I was a little annoyed because I went to look it up to see what that prayer was called. You know what it's called? The Lord's Prayer. Now I lay me down to sleep. (laughs) I thought it was the Lord's Prayer too, but that's completely different. Well, we've already stated we're not not religious. religious. (laughs) But... um. Nancy sets a timer on her watch and gets some shut eye. On the commentary, Wes Craven said that was his watch and it cost $250. <laughs> and he remembered it. I don't know why. Did the watch really talk? Because it did. Yes. I mean, maybe that's where all the money that's went. Why, that's why it was so expensive. <laughs> but this bothered me a lot. Before she falls asleep, they replay that portion of her conversation with Glenn about the Balinese way of dreaming. And I really wish they didn't do that. Yeah. It was subtle Spoon enough. Feeding. Yeah. Mm-hmm. With what Marge said yeah. about turning away. They didn't need that. But in the dream, Nancy makes her way downstairs then into the cellar. She opens up the furnace and finds that Freddie's glove is missing. 
She opens a door, which reveals a staircase that leads right into Freddy's boiler room. It's like he's been down there the whole time. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> but we hear Tina's voice, as well as kids singing that jump rope song. Freddy's just laughing to himself. I guess, you know, you love what you do. You never work a day in your life. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but Nancy makes her way down the spiral staircase, and we hear Glenn screaming. She then climbs down a ladder to the bottom level and calls out to Freddy. Making her way downtown, she <laughs> eventually finds Freddy's workshop. She sees a crucifix on the table and picks it up, but we get these random shots of Freddy just watching her, as well as his glove just popping up. Did you catch that? <laughs> like, it was just there, yeah. and then it's just gone. It's like, all right. He's like, I'm here. It was like on the table, huh? And yeah. Then they came, yeah. I didn't get that. But she heads to that spot where Freddy had Tina cornered at the beginning of the film, and she finds Glenn's headphones. She calls out to Freddy again, telling him to show himself. Her watch begins to beep, and then Freddy takes her up on her offer, scaring the shit out of her, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and chasing her down the staircase. She tells Freddy to follow her before jumping off the staircase and somehow landing outside of her house. Crazy ass lady. Yeah. <laughs> no. See, again, I know it's dream logic, but since when could she control <laughs> yeah. where she goes? She's like, not this time. Yeah. Yeah. This, um... To this little scene here after mm. that when she jumps, you can see like the fall mat or whatever oh, where she falls. It, like, to like save her? Puffs up. Yeah. <laughs> see, I saw, I thought I saw something, but I was like, well, if it is a mattress, it, maybe it's because she's dreaming. It's symbolism. Or I guess it's just a yeah. mistake. <laughs> <laughs> but she gets up and Freddy's nowhere to be seen. She calls out to him again as her watch counts down the final 10 seconds. Before it runs out, Freddy sprouts up out of nowhere and she grabs him. But she immediately wakes up in her bed alone as the alarm goes off. Well, when she's waking up, she has pieces of like the, the yeah. yeah the trellis and yes, stuff. Yes, and then it's just gone. Yeah. It looks really cool. Again, badass editing, man. Yeah. Yes. I knew what they were doing. But she looks around, sits up, and laments to herself that she might be going crazy after all. Just then, Freddie's like, Rah! <laughs> he literally <laughs> screams <Yeah. laughs> as he jumps up from the side of her bed, chasing her yet again. She smashes him in the head with a coffee pot, which really hurts him. <laughs> what? That's what I was. I was like, he can be hurt. Well, he's not well, in the, dream, not world in the dream world anymore. Well, he can he's come just out. A dude. Well, yeah, well, she, she tricked him. Yeah, she pulled him out. Yeah. Well, all right. <laughs> yeah. I'll allow it. Wasn't, wasn't that coffee pot full in the yeah, last Yeah, it was shot, supposed to be. They right? didn't want to burn Robert England. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> But she runs out of the room, setting up the sledgehammer and telling Freddy to chase her. She opens up a window at the end of the hall and calls out to the officer to get her dad. Nancy runs downstairs and breaks the glass on the front door, calling for her dad again. Upstairs, Freddy opens the door and gets fucking whacked in the gut with that sledgehammer. <laughs> he gets like fucked up. It is. Yeah. He's like, ooh. It's like slapstick. Oof. He then trips over the railing and falls down <laughs> the stairs backwards. Yeah. <laughs> He gets up threatening Nancy only to be sidelined by a fucking explosion. <laughs> Nancy made a bomb, dude. <laughs> what was it? The, the lamp? The light, uh, yeah. <laughs> but she calls through the window to her father again, and the officer's like, maybe I should go get the lieutenant. Dude, she's broken like three windows yes. and is screaming out of the house, but he's like, all right. I guess yeah. finally. Third time's a charm. Maybe if those bars weren't there, yeah. but whatever. Oh, shit. Thanks, mom. Of course, the officer leaves before he can see Freddy chasing Nancy through the window. So he can't tell. He's like, no, there was a man in there in an ugly ass sweater. <laughs> it, <laughs> but looked dirty. it was dirty. Yeah, dirty. Yeah, that's sweater. right. I'm sorry. But Nancy heads into the cellar and Freddy follows her. She throws gasoline on him and sets him on fire. That's cold. I thought it's, it was like yeah. cat piss or something. He's like, what he's the like, fuck this is this gross? <laughs> Who collects cat piss? Yeah. No, and, then he, and then he's, boom. Oh, right. no. He's on fire. He tries to chase her up the stairs and then takes a tumble down them. Nancy locks him down in the cellar. It's clearly a stuntman wearing a very bulky Freddy mask, right. but it's incredible no, the yeah. work that they do here. Yes. My question, though, is why does every door in their house lock from the outside? Like, uh, it's a dungeon. I, That's a great question. But, Who designed this house? <laughs> <laughs> the mom. Yeah. <laughs> wouldn't, wouldn't you endanger yourself also by doing that? Setting yeah, them all you're fire? burning yeah, the house you're... down. <laughs> yes. She didn't think that through. Well, her dad was supposed to come in 20 minutes. Ah, that's, that's true. Right. That is true. He does finally hear her, though, and he sees a ton of smoke coming from the house. With the help of three officers, they bust down the front door. The officers run down into the cellar while Donald and Nancy follow a trail of flaming footprints upstairs. This looks awesome. It looks really great. It but does. 
it made me laugh that he had business to take care of and he wasn't even trying to put his fire out before oh, no, 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 no. took care of it. He's like, look, I'm running, I'm on borrowed time. <laughs> and, and then the dad, like, he's like, Nancy, what's going on? It's yeah. like, you don't see these footprints. Yeah, she's yeah, in trouble yeah, again. Yeah. I, poor Nancy. <laughs> but in her mother's bedroom, Freddie is on top of Marge, like, choking her. <laughs> yeah. Nancy breaks a chair over his back like she's on some WWE yeah. shit. <laughs> And Donald throws a blanket over them to put out the fire. When he pulls the blanket away, Marge is a skeleton in a nightgown, (laughs) and she's sucked into the bed with blue flickering light, but at least she has the common courtesy to wave goodbye. Yeah. Oh, I took it. She's like, you let me die, fucker. (laughs) But being pulled deep into a bed, she really has gone to a better place. That's where I I want to be. (laughs) Very true. In, I gotta say, off off the rip, this makes no fucking sense. <laughs> no, I don't know what was going on. And I think John Saxon was even confused because he looked at it and the look on his face was like, you hate to see it. <laughs> <laughs> but an officer comes up and says the fires were put out downstairs and asks if everything's okay up here. Donald just closes the door on him without responding and hugs well... Nancy. Nancy tells Donald to go downstairs and that she'll be down there in a minute. He does as he's told and leaves Nancy alone. Nancy turns her back on the bed and Freddie ascends up from the bed looking like a sheet ghost. (laughs) It's pretty cool. The visuals, I swear, man. But he eventually cuts through the sheet and Nancy does not turn around. She tells him that it's too late and that she knows the secret. The whole thing is just a dream and he's not alive. She says she wants her mother and her friends again and takes back all the energy that she ever gave him. That's everything. I love that. Oh, it's fantastic. She tells him he's nothing, that he's shit, turns her back on him again. And when he goes to attack her, he just crumbles into like blue stardust. I don't know. (laughs) (laughs) So Freddy Krueger is a tulpa. (laughs) Yes. Fascinating. Exactly. Which is such an intriguing concept. Endlessly fascinated by it. Yes. So Nancy opens up the bedroom door and she's suddenly outside and it's morning. She's also dressed for school. Her mom follows behind her and says she's going to stop drinking and that she feels great. They say their goodbyes and Glenn pulls up with Tina and Rod in the back seat. The top of Glenn's convertible comes up on its own, but it's got the pattern of Freddie's sweater on it. Yes. I love that Glenn is like, I'm not doing this. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, I don't want... <laughs> But I'm glad he did, though. Yes, you know because I mean? otherwise, I mean, yeah. how do you know? Although the pattern does, is kind <laughs> yeah. of a yeah. But the doors and windows lock shortly after this, and Nancy screams for her mother as the car drives off. We see the girls jumping rope and singing that old Freddy song. Just then, Freddy's arm reaches through the window in the front door and pulls Marge's body through it as she screams. The girls continue their song, and the credits roll. I like the rhyme over the complete mm-hmm. silence as yes. the credit starts. It's yes. very um, oh, yeah. effective and very, very creepy. But after that wears off, I was left wondering, what the fuck just happened? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I got to be honest with you. I, I love this movie so much. I hate this ending. I really? I, I can't stand this ending. I also read that Wes Craven, this was not the ending that he intended. The funny thing, though, is that the ending is actually a compromise because he wanted to end it with good triumphing over evil, which is kind of where the whole story was leading in the first place. It really was, especially her whole speech about taking her power Mm -hmm. back. Exactly. And I think that would have been a more effective ending. But Robert Shea was like, no, we need a surprise, a twist ending. So he made the car. I guess the car is ready. I don't know. I'm sure they were like... We're going to make more movies out of this. Yeah. You can't kill Freddy. Well, yeah. Because it was supposed to be a single movie, right? Yeah. That was yeah, supposed to be I it. guarantee you that's what it was. Um, also, I can't. I'd be remiss if I didn't call out Marge's really blow up doll body being <laughs> yeah. very poorly pulled through. After all the amazing effects, it's like, mm. It's a little phoned in. Yeah. yeah. I like this ending. Really? Yeah. I just, because it kind of leaves it open. You know what I mean? I feel like open that was the good. point. Yeah. yeah. I feel like that was the point. But it's like, so all of that was a dream, but this is also a dream, but <laughs> I, 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 it's I real. I don't, don't know. I, yeah. I feel like I would have liked it better if maybe she did win, she did triumph, everything's back to normal, mm-hmm. but then they give a little tease that maybe Freddy is not dead. Yeah. As opposed yeah. to just being like, oh, all these people you watched, fucking dead. dead. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I have to ask the customary question. Right. What did you guys think of A Nightmare on Elm Street? 
It's a fantastic movie. Like I said, it had been so long since I had seen it. I was kind of going in expecting some cheese now that I'm watching it as an adult. But right. really, I mean, it fucking holds up. <laughs> I mean, this is from 1984. Yes. Great year. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> it gave us this and mm-hmm. John Paul. but <laughs> Just those two things. Yeah. So that's it. <laughs> But I mean, wow, it really, really looks great. The story is good. And I mean, Freddie is so mm-hmm. damn iconic. Yeah. Although I might have been having like a Mandela effect situation, but I remembered the original story being that he was a child molester. You know, what's insane about that is that I rented this on Amazon Prime mm-hmm. to watch it and the synopsis said that he was a child molester. See, and that's but, what I that's what I remembered. And so yeah. I was like, oh, he's just, a, which shows how desensitized I am because I'm like, oh, he's just a child murderer. That's fine. Yeah. <laughs> like, okay. well, no, you know, the funny thing is that I was like thinking about the pop culture craze of Freddie in the 80s. Yeah. I'm like, man, they wouldn't have done shit if he was. No. Yeah, yeah. They're like, well, he's a child killer. Hell yeah. We'll yeah. put him on a can of Pepsi. <laughs> <laughs> but if it was the other way around, yeah, they'd be no. like, fuck Freddie. Yeah. I, as they rightly should be. so. Yeah. Yeah. Of course, I love this movie. Mm-hmm. It's great. I do want to second what your sister was saying a minute ago. This movie is like great. Like everything that I've, like I don't, I remember that too. I was like, man, this is going to be yeah. just cheesy. I was like, right. oh, this is going to, but then watching it, I was like, this is not this at is all. This really fucking what, yeah. mm-hmm. And I've watched this movie a lot. And then it's like. I did when we watched it for the show. I was like, oh, man, this is going to be funny or whatever. But then we're watching I'm like, holy shit, this is. <laughs> no. Yeah, I was like, this is still really good. And there are like, moments where you're like, how ass. did they do that? Oh, no, yeah. No. Like, and for 84. Yeah. And I know I've said it, you know, a numerous amount of times. And like I said, it's nothing against uh, Jason or Michael Myers or whatever. But mm-hmm. if you're going to kill me, please. <laughs> Let me be like, ah, you got me. You know, like I said, it's just rude. It's you want to die laughing, yeah, right? Yeah, it's just rude to kill me and then just kind of walk away, shuffle away. Like, or whatever. You don't have any respect yeah. for me? No, God yeah. damn. It's like, man, come on. It's like, you chase me for a little bit. Say something. Yeah. You know, say something funny. Then kill me. Yeah, yeah. Then there you go. Then kill me. But no, that's fantastic. I honestly genuinely love this movie. I was kind of surprised, like you guys are saying, at how much it does hold yeah. up. A lot of movies from this era feel very dated yes, in a lot of ways, yes. and you're like, mm, even if it's just the effects. No, you yeah. Know? Um, but no, the story's great. The idea is amazing. Mm-hmm. The music is fantastic. The performances are good. They really yeah. are. I maybe had a Mandela effect uh, situation myself, though, because watching this movie, I thought Freddie was in it every scene. <laughs> I know, dude. Speaking of that. Hmm. Do you know how many total minutes of screen time he actually has? I have no idea. No, because it is very sparse. It I was feels surprised. like nothing, though. Do you want to take a guess real quick before? Uh, I, I would say you? like 20 minutes. That's fair. It's like a 90 minute movie. Yeah. Seven minutes. How the fuck? <laughs> how? I don't know. I read <laughs> that's on. That's why it felt yeah, so sparse. I read on IMDb that Freddie literally has seven minutes of screen time in this movie. Maybe that's why he's so scary because they didn't overuse him. That's and maybe. like, how, out of those seven minutes, how many times did we really see all of Honestly, his face in the movie? And then yeah. the kids constantly talking about yeah. What, yeah. how scary it is and what's going on. You're, you think, oh You're man. You're scary uh-huh. you haven't even really seen uh, him. That's, dude, that's, that's crazy. Great. See, again, that's just fucking genius. Yes. And again, a credit to Robert England. Oh, because yeah. yeah. He milked those seven minutes. Yeah, he did. And they're he, so memorable. He gave you a character to remember. Right. And Mr. Kruger, uh, you did walk past me at a Comic Con. <laughs> I love you. Yes. Love Robert England. I remember that. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, holy shit, it's ready. (laughs) I didn't know how to act. I was like, oh, shit. But I guess that brings us to ratings. And I'll go first. As I said before, again, don't want to repeat everything, but this movie is great. There is a reason that it's as iconic as it is. Yes. That it's a staple in the genre that everyone should watch. You know, it lives up to whatever you heard about it. Mm -hmm. Very interesting career swerve for Wes Craven after all those exploitation fic- yeah. flicks to come and do this because this feels but good for him yeah and nothing against those films even though there's a lot of questionable yes tactics mm-hmm. and things yes but this is a crowning achievement in horror and I just think it's fantastic my only main issue with this film 
I will say it's funny to watch, but watching Freddy Krueger get his ass kicked in the yeah. last bit yeah. is a <laughs> little upsetting. And, <laughs> that and, dude was uh, not prepared. No. <laughs> He's like, nobody told me about booby traps. How long have I been dead? But uh, also the ending. I, I really can't get with the ending. It upsets me because I want to see what Wes Craven had in mind. They filmed apparently four endings total. Right. Damn. And they ended up showing a compromise of the endings. Mm-hmm. And unfortunately, we didn't get to see the arc that it was obviously leading to. Yeah, it really was. You know, good triumphing triumphing over evil yeah. and then Freddy just kind of being gone. Because of that, I can't unfortunately give it a perfect 10. Right. But I do love this movie a lot and I will happily give it out of 10 cups of coffee. <laughs> I'm going to give A Nightmare on Elm Street nine cups of coffee out of ten. And I will open the floor to you. I know we say it all the time, (laughs) but I also won't repeat what we've already (laughs) said. Um, But no, yeah, I'm going to go with you on this. Yeah. It's this movie has always like been there to where it's like, oh, well, let's just watch Freddy. <laughs> or let's, and then, yeah, there's a lot of sequels, and you know, not all of them are Get great. Silly. But yeah, yeah and they, <laughs> they kind of change. But I feel like this one right here, if you're going to watch any Freddy movie, it needs to be this first one. Right. And I do like the ending, but that's only because I'm glad that Freddy's still alive. And it's not <laughs> like, I mean, think about it if they would have ended it there. Mm hmm. Then it would have been one Freddy movie. You know what well, I mean? What what would have like, and then them do a sequel and been like, oh, we got you. This just is kidding. How he's he's really, he's you know what here. I mean? I feel like that would have probably muddied it a lot more. It would have, you know, how bad would that have been? You know what you I would have done honestly is I would have had them drive off, but then you still have those girls jumping rope, and you realize that it's fear that keeps them alive. And people and are yeah, still afraid as yeah, long as they I can still, give them yeah. that. you know. Uh, but. Um, but and the yeah. Freddy car, it wouldn't be a Freddy car. Yeah, <laughs> it would just be his car. Well, let's be clear. But I'm sorry, to it'd interrupt. be a car with Freddy's face on it. <laughs> just, I was like, what the fuck? Um, but I also, out of ten cups of coffee, will give Nightmare on Elm Street nine cups of coffee out of ten. I enjoy this movie. Like I said, I have the whole box set. Right. And I mean, it's if you're gonna kill me, say something good, please. <laughs> I'll say it again. <laughs> Please say something funny. So while I'm dying, I'm like, God, like damn, he, yeah. <laughs> that was good. He got right. my ass. Right. He's roasting the shit out of me <laughs> while I'm dying. I'm like... All right. Um, again, I won't. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the customary. Mm-hmm. Um, but damn, is this movie good? And yeah. some of the visuals in this movie are so iconic and striking and genuinely fucking scary mm-hmm. that it's like, major props and also those weird things that you experience in dreaming like the running or like when the dude's reading uh in the class but his voice is all weird and slow that's Mm -hmm. so real and so relatable just wow (laughs) um so yeah we're gonna have to jackpot it really yeah um on a scale from one to ten cups of coffee i'm gonna give a nightmare on elm street nine out of ten Cups of coffee. Hey, we did. Ding, 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 ding. Yeah. Yeah. No, but this movie is so good. Like, if you haven't seen it, please go watch it. I yes. hope you watched it before the show. Yes. I, I say that no, every yeah. time before we ruin it. Yeah, exactly. Like, well, I fucking know everything that happens. <laughs> no. But for me, honestly, as Freddie does get a little goofier as the series goes on, yeah, this to me is prime. Yeah, perfect. Oh, like yeah. Freddie. Yeah, he's scary, but he still has some. Sass. Yeah. Sass. <laughs> well, that's all from us at Podmortem. What would you rate A Nightmare on Elm Street and what should we watch next? Let us know on Twitter at the Podmortem. Don't forget to follow us on Instagram and like us on Facebook. Be sure to follow each of us on Twitter at TravisMWH, at Blood and Smoke, and at Real Streeter84. Remember, the things you fear only have as much power as you give them. Until next time. <laughs>